EAA Chapter 166, Hartford, Connecticut, home of the Vans RV12 build. It's another build night here at the RV12 hangar. Let's step inside the build construction cage and see if we can find Rick Montero for an update. So Rick, here we are, middle of August 2022, and the last build uh, video we did, we attached the midsection fuselage with the tail section, made one airplane, but the work certainly isn't done. Now we're starting to work on uh, the back window, which may seem simple, but pretty, pretty critical thing to do. And we're also working on rudder pedals, right? Hey, yeah, so Larry, the, um, the last time we met, we did do the install or the uh, merging of the two parts. So the tail cone and the uh, mid fuselage. So what we've done since then, we've been spending a lot of time working on the aft window. And uh, there's some critical steps to doing that to make sure that um, you know you get the position correct and that you don't damage the plexiglass because it's uh, um, you have to use special tools to drill it to make sure that you don't crack it and uh, there's some uh, notching and blending you have to do on the aft edge of the window to make sure that you get clearance from the uh, the uh, roll bar brace brackets. Um, so those are some of the things that we've completed on the window. I'll talk more in detail on that in just a moment. But some additional things that we've worked on since are we've uh, built the uh, seat backs, completed those and got them uh, trial fit. And uh, tonight we're actually continuing work on our rudder pedals to, to get those uh, um, ready for installation. So we're installing the master cylinders and uh, doing some drilling and fitting on those as well. All right, so uh, for installation of the aft window, um, the first thing to do is you have to uh, sort of uh, temporarily install it and uh, use clamps to clamp it to the, uh, the roll bar to hold it in position. And uh, this is so that you can then start to drill uh, through the uh, plexiglass into the roll bar. And then there's also drilling that you have to do uh, on these, turtle, these aft turtle deck skins um, to go through them and match drill into the plexiglass. Now, to do the drilling on the plexiglass, you have to use a special drill that's got called a plexi point drill. It's uh, got an actually sharper point to them. And they're designed so that you can drill through the plexiglass without cracking it. So uh, it's important to, if you don't have those types of bits, to do a little research, go out and, and get yourself some. Um, after you've uh, dry fitted and started drilling, then you Clico it in place. And then once you have it in place in the proper position, then you have to tap through the uh, plexiglass uh, into the uh, roll bar and it's a continuous tapping operation all the way through the uh, plexiglass into the roll bar using a 6-32 uh, tap. Now as far as positioning goes um, we were initially following our directions that we got uh, with our kit which is a, an older kit and our directions told us to uh, line up the forward edge of the uh, window with the forward edge of the aft frame on the roll bar. But one of our members was doing a little research and discovered that there's actually an updated uh, instruction for installing the aft window that actually tells you to line up the forward edge with the aft edge of the forward frame on the uh, roll bar. So that was a, a critical discovery for us because if we had followed the directions we had with us, our aft window would have been positioned about an eighth of an inch further back, which would have increased the um, interference with the back edge of the window and uh, some of the uh, support brackets on the, uh, for the roll bar brace. Now part of the operation for um, installing the aft window, you have to um, actually notch out the uh, the aft window so that it doesn't actually interfere with the uh, support brackets on that uh, roll bar brace. Um, so we did that, uh, we just marked where the, the contact points was when we did the dry fitting, pulled it out, and then we uh, used a Dremel tool and a sanding drum to uh, notch out the area and put in some nice radius there so that uh, we didn't create any sharp, uh, sharp corners. 
you, there's a lot of drilling through the uh, plexiglass that you have to do and uh, when you're drilling plexiglass you want to make sure you're doing it in warm weather. Um, one of the benefits that we have of uh, doing this work in the middle of summer in an unair conditioned hangar is that we had no problem with the uh, temperature being right. In fact, as we were doing most of the install and drilling, uh, we happened to have some of the warmest weather of the year and uh, our temperatures in the hangar here were in the 90s actually. So uh, it made for perfect weather for drilling through the uh, plexiglass. Okay, so over on the, the uh, workbench over here, uh, we've got uh, Mark and Ryan working on setting up the, uh, the rudder pedals for us. So in terms of what you have to do per the instructions, is basically take the main rudder pedal bars here, mount them through bushings, these plastic bushings, and then um, uh, set them up so that you get the proper vertical alignment. And uh, the whole goal here is get these, uh, these are actually the uh, pedal parts that activate the master cylinders. And so we got to make sure that we get the, the alignment correct so that uh, once we install it and you step on the brakes, that activates the, uh, the master cylinders and gives you the braking action. All right, so we've uh, just sort of mock, created a mock-up where we put them in place uh, just to see what it's going to look like. And uh, what you can see is, uh, you know, the master cylinders are here, they're, uh, the connections are facing forward, and we've got some clamps holding the actual toe brakes uh, in position. You get them in the right position by actually locking the other side, two of them together, and that puts it in sort of a neutral position so that you can get these toe brakes in uh, the proper position on the other side. And uh, that's essentially what it'll look like once it's in place. Um, you know, it's mounted through some nut plates on the uh, part of the firewall here um, that go through these, uh, um, you know, these brackets here that hold it in place or bushings. And um, so that's essentially what we're working on tonight is getting them ready so they're ready to be installed uh, within the next week or so. So Rick, back from uh, Air Venture 2022 at Oshkosh, and the big news for builders or anybody ordering parts for airplanes is a choke supply chain. Now this kit uh, we've had for a while. What are you seeing as far as uh, back order for getting parts? Well, it's um, you know back order and getting parts. Fortunately, most of what we've needed have been hardware, you know, nuts, bolts, washers, things like that. And uh, I've been able to place the order and get those things in within a couple of weeks. Uh, so no issues there. But um, there are other parts uh, I've looked at, like we were thinking at one point, we might need one of the bushings, plastic bushings for the uh, rudder pedal. And that's back order with no indication of when um, you'd get delivery. And on my own build, I'm building an RV-10 and I'm still waiting for the trailing edge to come in for my, um, my rudder. And it's been months and they can't give me a date of when they'll deliver. Yeah, so that's good advice for anybody thinking about building a kit have, that may have a kit in progress or anybody else with an airplane looking for consumables, avionics. It's a different world out there and I think you need to plan ahead. Speaking of planning, that's it for another uh, build video here at the uh, RV-12 hangar EAA Chapter 166 in Hartford. We'll see you next time.